Good morning. I thank God this morning that I believe in a man named Jesus. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I get excited when I hear that. Church, I thank God this morning we're standing on the promises of our son, God's only son, Jesus Christ. Church, it's such an amazing time to be in the Lord's house this morning. I want to thank you for coming out today. There's one thing that I uh, need to make sure we put in the announcements this morning, as there will be a business meeting this Wednesday night. So just be in prayer about that. So I think we forgot to get that in the bulletin. So just be praying about that and come out as we just want to do God's business there. Church, it's an honor to be here today. I think about the, the, the Lord has blessed us so much with the rain, and, and I want to tell you all something. We get to the point sometimes in life as Christians that we pray and we pray and we pray, and then when God answers our prayers, we're like, really? Do you all realize that? It's not been just a couple of weeks ago that we prayed. It's so dry. We said, Lord, Lord, we need some rain. Just send our rain. And now we're like, all right, Lord, that's enough, right? You answered our prayer, but we didn't want you to do too much. So, church, I thank God that he sends us what we need exactly when we need it. So, this morning, I would ask you as we jump into the message, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, as we turn to the book of Nehemiah, chapter number 5. Church, I love the fact over the last several months, if we've been studying the book of Nehemiah and each and every week, that God has given us a message and, and the sermon that just a, so applicable to our lives each and every day. And, and I love the fact that where the Lord's leading this morning as we continue in Nehemiah chapter number five. It's just amazing. So, church, before we get into the scripture this morning, I wanted to share something with you that we, we've been looking at some different things. And I know each and every Sunday I get up, my wife just looks at me like, oh, I hope you don't talk about me today. I hope you don't tell a story about me today, you know, and I thought, well, I may slide one in there, I may not, but she, she wouldn't give me a ride home Wednesday night. None of you give me a ride home Wednesday night. Did y'all know that? Some of y'all was here Wednesday night. We had just an amazing, wonderful, God-filled service. There were so many people sharing their, their prayers and how God announced their prayers and sharing testimonies. It was a wonderful time, and, and of course, I messed that up and told a story about my wife, and so she didn't give me a ride home, so it was, it was, it was tough. It was tough, so y'all pray for me, but... Anyway, I want to share something with you this morning. I want y'all to think about some of these different expressions, if you will. I want to share some of these with you, and I want y'all to think about some of the first things that's going to come to your mind this morning is, what does it mean to kick the bucket? Some of you know what they're right. You know what that means, so to kick the bucket. I want you to think about some of these. What about if you said, hey, I hope you break a leg, right? Some of y'all said that about me, hoping I'd slip off here and fall, right? I'd love to see him break a leg. I know, I know, that's fine. So... How many of you have ever heard the saying, you dance like you have two left feet? Right? How many of you seen the YouTube video that we've done a few what Yeah? Y'all seen that? I have two left feet. I can't dance. All right? So just another expression, if you will. How many of you have ever heard the saying, I'm under the weather? You heard that? That means you're getting rained upon. You're under the weather. I don't know. There's different things. How many of you ever heard the saying, play it by ear? We'll just go. That's the way church services are, right? We'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. No big deal. So there's so many different things that we've heard and different expressions. What about this one? You ever heard someone say you're driving me up the wall? Y'all heard that? Some of you drive me up the wall, okay? Amen. Some of you will get that when you get in your car and leave today. How many of you have ever heard the saying you're back on the wagon? Or maybe you fell off the wagon, right? Church, I don't know where all these expressions come from, but there's so many different ones. Or maybe you're just flying by the seat of your pants this morning, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Church, we're just flying by the seat of our pants, and you ever heard the saying, it's raining like cats and dogs? How many of you have said that in the last week and a half? Amen? We've all said some of these things, and then, of course, this, this is one of my favorite ones that applies to my life, you're a day late and a dollar short, right? That's the story of my life. Church, some of y'all are getting these, and some of you are like, where's he going with this? Church, I want you to think about it. Some of these are unusual expressions. Some of these are things that sometimes, that's the title of our message today, is unusual expressions. As we look at those and we hear some of these, some of you laugh at them and some of you looking at me like, man, he is an idiot, right? I, I, I can see the looks on your faces in church. That's what expressions are. A lot of times the look on our face, people can read what we're thinking. They can read our emotions just by the expression that's on your face. I know some of you right now, you walk into church and you're like, wow, well, I'm glad to be here today. I love coming to Westfield Baptist Church, right? Y'all look like that, not me, right? 
that's some of the expressions on Christians' faces today. And we think, why do people not want what we want? Church, it's because of the expressions that are on our faces, the emotions that we have in our lives. And we say, wow, why don't people want to come to church? Look at y'all, right? That's funny. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. Church, when we think about these expressions, there's something so amazing about God's Word this morning. As we're looking at the book of Nehemiah here in chapter number 5, Nehemiah does something that many of you, if you've seen it happen in a Baptist church, you'd be like, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't happening here. Church, he has an unusual expression, something that we'll see in just a moment that some of you may say, wow, I wouldn't have done that, or I can't believe Brad did that. So, But y'all, I, I tell you what, church, sometimes we need to think about the expressions that's on our faces. Because when we want to invite people into church, we want people to be a part of what we got, but we're sitting around like, I am holy today, right? I am a Baptist. And I love coming to church. You need what I've got. Right? (laughs) Church, I'm telling you, this is what people see when they look at churches. And then you say, why don't they want what I've got? Church, it's time for the Christians. It's time for this world to get to the point and say, you know what? I have Jesus. We sang a song a while ago. I believe in a man named Jesus. Church, I believe in Calvary. I believe that Jesus Christ shed every drop of his blood that I may have eternal life. And I'm happy about that. Amen? Maybe I I am. I don't know about y'all. See, you see how quickly an expression speaks volumes. Church, this morning we're going to see something that's so amazing that Nehemiah has an expression that's kind of unusual and the people didn't know kind of how to take it or what to think about. Church, think about this for just a moment. The definition of an expression, the process of making someone know what your thoughts are, and what your feelings are. It's a verb or a reaction that you're faced sometimes. You can't hide what you're thinking. And, and, and I'm going to need a ride home after I tell you all this story, but my wife, I won't never, you know how when the birthdays are coming up, Christmas time's coming up and you want a certain gift? Y'all know what I'm talking about? And you'll start dropping hints. You know, wow, boy, that gun's on sale this week. <laughs> oh, I really like that gun. She, I ain't going there. Anyway, <laughs> Church, we get things on our minds sometimes, and I know sometimes you may slide a sales paper out and be like, you know, wow, look at this. Lowe's has got steel weed eaters on sale, you know? And we make those comments like that, and, and, and I ain't going to do it, honey. I love it, and I'm going to do it anyway. Church, I love my wife, but I wanted a steel weed eater. That's what I wanted. And all my wife heard was weed eater. And I got a Troy built weed eater. Some of you men know the difference, right? Y'all see me after church, I will need a ride home. Church, let's get into God's Word this morning. We're in Nehemiah chapter number 5. I would ask you, once you found your place there, to please stand and honor the reading of God's holy, inspired Word this morning. We're in Nehemiah chapter number 5. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 6 this morning. Church, it's amazing when we read God's Word because Nehemiah here, he says, And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. And I said, It is not good that ye do aught ye not to walk in the fear of our God, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray to you, them even this day their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and other corn, the wine, the oil, and that ye exact of them. Then said they, We will restore them and require nothing of them. So will do thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Church, in verse number 13, I want you to think about something here. And it says, Also I shook my lap and said, So God shook out every man from his house and from his labor, and that performeth not his promise. Even thus be his shaken out emptied. And all that congregation said, Church, look at this, right here in God's word, all the congregation said, Amen, and they praised the Lord, and the people did according 
to this promise. Church, let us pray this morning. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I want to thank you. God, I want to praise you from the depths of my heart today. God, that we have assembled here today. God, to worship you. God, I pray that each and every person here at Westfield Baptist Church, God, right now they will clear their minds. God, they will prepare their hearts God, to be receptive to your word. God, I just want to thank you today. There's so many great things happening here at Westfield Baptist Church, God, and I want the people, God, to see the mighty work that you have done here. God, and most importantly, I ask you today, if there's one here today, Lord, that's not saved, God, I pray, God, right now that their heart has been prepared, God, and you send the Holy Spirit, Lord, that they may accept Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. Father God, we love you, Lord, and we praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, you may be seated today. Church, I know that I, I may have said some things a while ago that were funny to some of you. Some of you said, well, it wasn't too funny to me, and I promise you that my wife is going to kill me after the service. I can promise you that. I can guarantee you that. So, church, I tell you, it's so amazing because we've been looking at Nehemiah chapter number 5, and one of the things that we looked at last week was so amazing to me because Nehemiah was pouring his heart out to these people as he was listening to their concerns and their problems. And, and we talked about the difference between being a selfless Christian and a selfish Christian. Church, there's a difference, amen? You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a difference. The people here in, at Jerusalem, they're rebuilding the wall, and, and everything's going great. Y'all know that's the way church is. Everything's going great, and, and all of a sudden the devil will throw a wrench in the system, and, and all of a sudden, guess what? We fall apart, Amen? Church, we really do. And I couldn't help but think about Nehemiah coming along, and he's encouraging these people. The walls has went up. They're about halfway up. They've restored all the gates all the way around Jerusalem. And I thought, wow, church, can, can you imagine? I, I made a joke a few weeks ago. You can't even get a building permit in 52 days, right? You can't do it. You go over to the county office and see what happens. It's not going to happen. Could you imagine if, if this church... This sanctuary was built in 52 days. The people of Surrey County would be like, wow! Them people's got it going on over there, right? Church, this is how amazing this is. All the work and the construction that went into this wall. It's going up and all of a sudden, the people start fussing and fighting. They're taking advantage of one another and it's like, Nehemiah has this unusual expression. Church, I want you to think about it. Nehemiah has an expression that would have baffled these people. I could almost see him throwing his hands up like, what are you doing? Have you not seen what God has done? Look how amazing it is. We built every one of these tents. Do I need to go over the gates again? Amen. Church, think about it. Nehemiah has went around and all these gates were prepared and built and all the work that's went into this, the walls is coming up. He's like, God has blessed you tremendously and now you're fussing and fighting. And he's like, really? What's wrong? Church, I think sometimes that's the way we are, right? We get to the point, church, I, I, I tell you, I'll tell you this every Sunday until, until you run me off or you don't need me no more, which that's August 19th, right? <laughs> hey, man, church, you laugh about it, but think about it. From the depths of my heart, God has blessed this church. We've seen souls get saved. Hey, man, church, we've seen people baptized. We've seen people join this church. We've watched the women come up with a women's Bible study. We've watched a women's conference happen right here at this church. Church, there is God-sized things happening here. And sometimes we think, oh, what's next week, right? That's funny. I don't care, y'all. I'm telling you, this is the way a lot of Christians are and the way a lot of churches are. We're like, look what God is doing. And church, we take it for granted. And right here in Nehemiah's day, the people were no different. They were taking advantage of what God had done for them. It was so amazing to, for Nehemiah to walk around and look and say, wow, it's so, look what God's done. He's blessed all the, the, the path, the, the, the finances, the materials. I mean, all the different things that's going on here in Nehemiah. It's so amazing, church. And all of a sudden, the people are fussing and fighting. They're robbing each other. They're, they're letting each other borrow money and then charging them interest. Church, I, I shared it with the 830 crowd this morning. You go to the bank tomorrow morning. You go to your local bank. I don't care where it's at. And you tell them, I want a loan. And when they tell you we're going to charge you 12% interest, you tell me whether you borrowed the money or not. Y'all know that? That's, that's, this is the example here this morning. They're charging 12% and higher interest on the money that they were letting people borrow. And on top of that, they said, you know, I know we're going to charge you some interest, but I need collateral. I need you to put up your farm. 
I need you to put up your house and all your land. Church, this is amazing because these are Christian people taking advantage of one another. And I thought, wow, church, this is horrible. And Nehemiah's got this unusual expression. Y'all, God's got a sense of humor. I'm telling you, he's got, because he's walking around. What's, what's wrong with you? Look what God has done, and you're taking advantage of one another. Church, it's sad, but Nehemiah done something that's so amazing right here. He hit the problem head on. He didn't sugarcoat it. He said, this is wrong. We can't be doing this. Church, this morning, I want to preach on three things this morning. Three steps that Nehemiah kind of enacted here, if you will, for these unusual expressions to take place. Church, the first thing we see this morning, that Nehemiah had a reaction. The reaction of Nehemiah was something so amazing that we see in verse number six. Church, Nehemiah was very angry. Church, we talked about this shortly, just a little bit last week. Nehemiah was very angry. He's upset. Y'all look at your Bible, all right? Y'all look at that. Y'all look at me. Y'all look at this. It says, I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Church, I want to tell you something. I shared it with the 830 crowd this morning. You know there's different levels of angry. Y'all know that? Oh, yeah? Come on, Westfield. You're red-blooded. I know there's different levels of anger. Some of you is right in here. Well, I'm a little bit angry. Well, Brad, you've pushed my button now. I'm right here, right? And then some of us get to the point that we're just downright mad, right? I'm talking about y'all, not me, right? I don't get mad or angry. Y'all ask my wife. I'm the sweetest thing since Cairo served. I'm telling you what, church. I, I, no, I'm being facetious. Y'all know that. Church, but the point is, Nehemiah had gotten angry. And a lot of times, we don't understand, but it's okay to be angry, church, as long as we don't sin. That's the difference. And I thought about all through the scriptures. Church, Jesus got angry. Did you know that? Jesus got angry. Y'all think about some of the things that when he rebuked the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and when he came into the temple and the, and the money changers are, are doing this exact same thing, they're taking advantage of people's situations, and they're charging them interest, and they're bribing them, and all the different problems. And Jesus got mad, and he turned the table over. Wow. He got angry, did he not, church? Church, the fact of the matter is, it's okay to get angry. Just like what Paul wrote about in Ephesians, as long as we don't sin. Church, because when we get to the point that we get angry and we let our emotions take over and take place, we'll get to the point that we start living in the flesh. Church, Nehemiah was very angry. And he'd done something that's so amazing, and we talked about it before. Church, look at verse number 7. Something that he'd done, and he said that he consulted with his self. Church, I want to tell you something. The biggest problem with Christians today the biggest problem, y'all listen to this, this is very important. The biggest problems with Christians today, when we get angry, the very first thing we do is we do what we want to do. Amen? That's the first thing we do. And what Nehemiah did, he took the time. That word consulted means he counseled. He counseled with God. Church, he had a conversation with the Heavenly Father, and he said, God, how do I need to handle this situation? Church, I can almost see him with this unusual expression. When he throwed his hands up, and the people's like, wow, what's wrong with him? He ain't never acted like that, right? He's mad. Church, he, he went and got alone somewhere, and he talked to God. He said, God, what, I, what do you want me to do? Christian, if we would do that, if we would sit down and have a personable conversation with God and say, God, you know what? I'm, I'm having a problem in my house right now. I, I need some guidance. I need, I, I need some wisdom here. I need some integrity. You know what? I'm having some problems with my finances. Church, we do everything but take our problems to God. And Nehemiah gave us the ultimate example here. He said, you know what? God, I'm angry. And church, he'd done something here. He assessed the situation. Because when he started looking around, realizing what some of the problems, some of the issues was, church, I love the fact that what he did here is he hearing the people's cry, he's hearing their problems, and he used one of the best examples here of integrity and wisdom that you could ever ask for is he took the time. Church, look at verse number seven there at the end of the verse number seven. He says, ye exact usury, every one of his brother, and I set a great assembly against them. Church, Nehemiah done something here amazing. He starts assessing the situation, and he's looking at the problems and the issues all around, and he starts thinking about how many people, how many people around right now are paying attention to what's going on. Church, this is what I'm talking about, unusual expressions. There's people outside the doors of this church that might see your expression and say, I don't want no part of that. There's people sitting in this church right now be like, you know what, I wish I smiled like that person did all the time. Or I wish I was happy like this person was all the time. 
Church, these expressions is what people read on our faces. Whether we say it or not, they hear it just for the sheer actions of our faces. And what Nehemiah did when he started sitting around and he started praying to God and he starts looking around to all these people and he says, you know what? There's a great assembly of people watching what you're doing. Church, there's people right now watching your lives. There's people watching Westfield Baptist Church saying, what's that church going to do? What direction is that church going in? How's that church going to survive? Is that church doing the right thing? Church, all the different questions that you could possibly ask. But what's so amazing is our expressions. That's what's speaking right now. Amen? Church, that's what's speaking right now. So Nehemiah had a reaction to this problem and issue, if you will. And church, the second thing we see this morning, there was the rebuke of Nehemiah. Nehemiah starts talking about something there in verses 7 through 11. He says, you know what? You shouldn't be acting that way. You shouldn't be doing these things. Church, he's quoting some old scripture. He went right back to God's word. It's where the problems and the answers to everything in life are right here. Do you know that? Church, we need to be reminded of this daily because the, the issues in life, any question, any concern you've got in your life right now, the answers are right here in God's word. Amen? Church, they're all here. And Nehemiah starts quoting over in Deuteronomy when he says, you know what? The Old Testament, we ain't got there yet, right? He ain't got the New Testament. But the Old Testament, he's saying, you know what? Look at the Holy Scriptures. Look at the pen and talk. Look at all the different things that we've got right here and our resources to say, you know what? You're not supposed to be charging your brother or your sister in Christ interest. You're supposed to help them. You're supposed to provide for them. You're supposed to do all these great things, but you're not supposed to charge them interest. You're not supposed to take advantage of them. Church, I think about it oftentimes in life when we have issues and problems. If we'd go to God's Word first, life would be so much better. Do you know that? How many of you try to fix a problem on your own? Amen? The rest of you tell me your secret, right? Church, think about that. A lot of times we try to fix problems and issues on our own, and it's like once we can't fix it, then we'll go ask our friend, hey, what's your advice on this? How can I fix this? When that don't work, then we'll go ask another friend. When that don't work, we may ask our spouse, right? Maybe. Some of y'all get that after a while. Church, we do these types of things, and at the very end of the day, after we've made a mess and everything's fell into shambles, we'll say, God, I need some help. Father, my life's a wreck right now. Church, we do that the very last thing. And I love the fact that Nehemiah, when he went to God's Word, and he said, listen, this is, what, this is what the Scripture tells us to do. And it's time we started doing it. So church, when he pointed this out to the people, he started rebuking them for the usury, for the taxes they was charging. And church, I tell you, he goes a little bit further, and he starts talking about in verse number 8, he says, you know what? What about your integrity? What about your integrity? Church, look at verse number 8. He says, And I said unto them, Nehemiah's not holding anything back. He says, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which sold unto the heathen, and will even ye sell the brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Church, he's almost calling them out on the red carpet right here. Think about this. He's saying, You know what? The enemy is on the outside of the walls, and they've been wanting to attack us. They've been wanting to persecute us. They're wanting to see us fail. But right now, they're still laughing. Because they're watching us fighting on the inside of the walls. We're supposed to be the Christians, right? Church, think about that. We're the self-righteous. Y'all look at me, right? We're Christians. Amen. I live a perfect life. I don't never do nothing wrong. That's our mentality. So I'm not, I'm not, Y'all know I'm, I'm picking. We're not like that. But we say, look at my life. We're the Christians. Church, we, we're supposed to have what the world wants. We're not supposed to want what the world has. Amen. Church, there's a difference. And if we would get a glimpse of this right here in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah's saying, you're acting like the enemy. You're acting like the enemy. And we're on the inside of the walls and we're fussing and fighting. Church, I can almost see this expression on Nehemiah's face that he's just still to the point that he can't believe what he's seeing. He can't believe what he's hearing. And, and, and church is almost to the point where he could almost say, you know what? You're a bunch of hypocrites, right? Y'all know what a hypocrite is? Right? We don't want to be a hypocrite. Church, if we're going to bring people into Westfield Baptist Church, if we're going to be a community that's going to love our neighbors, we're going to love everybody, we're going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we want to get each and every person into this church, doesn't matter what they're wearing, what race they are, it doesn't matter what their financial status is. Church, if we're going to do these things, we're going to start having some unusual expressions on our face. And that's smiling, amen? Y'all try that for me. It feels good to smile, does it not? Church, it feels good to come into God's house and be loved on 
and say, you know what? I don't want people to say it's unusual because I smile today. I don't. Church, I want people to be able to look at this church and say, wow, there's such a love in that church that you can see it on the people's faces. And not only can you see it, you can feel it when you walk in the door. Church, that, that's, that's what a New Testament church is supposed to look like, right? That's what God's house is supposed to look like, that when people come in here, they see our expressions on their face and they think, wow, that is so amazing. Church, I love the fact that if we look at Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10, the Bible tells us to do good to all men. It doesn't leave nobody's name out. It doesn't specifically say just to people at Westfield Baptist Church. It doesn't specifically say just to your neighbor. Church, it says we're supposed to do good to all men. To all men, no matter what. Church, and I, I could almost see Nehemiah as he's kind of walking around. He's gathered these people around. He's got a crowd at this point. And he's got this unusual expression saying, what, what are you doing? Why are you not loving on one another? Why are you not serving the way we've been serving? Look what God has done. We're supposed to be looking out for one another. Church, I think about this. If we can get to the point that our expressions, people see Jesus. That's all, that's, that's all it's about. That's all this life's about. That we serve him and people look on us and say, wow. So that's what it's like to be a Christian. To be happy and be smiling and to have true joy. Church, I'll tell you something. Nehemiah has poured his heart out to these people, church. And the third thing we see this morning as we come to a close that we start looking at Nehemiah. Nehemiah had a reaction. And it's so amazing that Nehemiah had a reaction that he started rebuking the people. And church, the third thing we see this morning is that there was a response by the people. Y'all look at verse number 12. And the Bible says, Then they said, They, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will do we as you sayest. Then I called the priest and took an oath in them. They should do according to this promise. Church, I want to tell you something. This is so amazing that when I look at this, Nehemiah says, you know what? You're living wrong. It's time to repent. It's time to confess your sins, to get away from your sins and get back to God's Word and start living a good Christian life. And the people said, you know what? Nehemiah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Church, I want to tell you something. I shared with 830 crowd this morning. And I shared it Wednesday night, and I think it's the first time I ever shared it Wednesday night. And I'm going to tell you this because I love you this morning. And some of you don't realize it. And you need to be reminded of this, that each and every time that I have seen this church, I've seen you guys gather on this altar and pray. I've seen God do amazing things at this church. Did you know that? Church, each and every time I've seen people flood this altar, I've seen somebody get saved. I've seen somebody say, you know what, preacher? It's time I get baptized. You know what? I'd love to join the church. I'd love to become a part of the family of Westfield Baptist Church. Church, I've seen amazing things happen when you pray. And, and I know many of you sitting in your pew right now, you'd say, well, Brad, I, I can pray right here in this pew. God's still here. He's omnipotent, right? That's, that's, our, that's our mentality. Church, there's something so sweet and pleasant when a church gathers around the altar and we are united and we lift our prayers up to God. Say, God bless our church. Church, right now, you need to be praying like you've never prayed before. You need to be praying for Brian, your new pastor, like you've never prayed before to God to bless him, to bless this church, that you just need to have so much love and unity that he will feel the exact same thing that I felt with my family when I come into this church, that he will feel your love and he will feel your prayers, church. We need to be praying like never before because the people here in Nehemiah's day, they started having a response. They started agreeing and saying, you know what, he's right. Nehemiah was a great spiritual leader. He said, you know, he is exactly right. And the accountability that came into place, you know, they got to the point and said, you know what, the priest gathered around. Church, I love the fact that I was reading. I love J. Vernon McGee. I love to read his stuff. And I was reading, and I love what J. Vernon McGee said. He said, you know what, it's one thing to say that you're going to do what you say, but I want it in writing. Y'all don't you think about this. Nehemiah gathered a crowd around, and he said, you're going to make an oath in front of the preacher, in front of the priest, and in front of the congregation. The people are going to hear you say that you're going to give the property back. You're going to give back all the things that you took from the church. It's so amazing because what happens is the people say, you know what? This man ain't playing, right? He ain't playing. I can see the expressions on his face. He's rebuked the people, and church, there's something amazing starts happening. The people are following God. They're not following Nehemiah. So if I could urge you this morning that if you're going to have a response this morning that you say, you know what? Don't follow the preacher. Don't follow the congregation. Follow God. 
Because church at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Church, the last thing we see this morning, I love the fact, y'all look at verse number 13. I love something that Nehemiah done right here. And this is the whole theme that made me think about an unusual expression. Nehemiah done something here that would shock the conscience of most churches this morning. He says, also, I shook my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not his promise. Church, I want to tell you something this morning. This is what Nehemiah did. He took his coat off, if you will. He could have seen, if you study the scripture in the olden days, they'd had a robe on, and they'd walk around trying to keep the dust off of it. And he says, you know what? If you don't do what you vow to God that you're going to do, I pray that he shakes you out, and you fall out empty right where you fall. Church, I want to tell you something this morning. From the bottom of our hearts this morning, we should pray that God don't shake me out. God, don't shake me out. I want to draw closer to you than I've ever been before. Because church, when Nehemiah started shaking his robe and his clothes out, the people saw the expression on his face and said, Wow, I don't want God's judgment on my life. Westfield Baptist Church, I don't want God's judgment on my life. And I don't want his judgment on his church. Church, it's time for each and every one of us to say, You know what? I want to have these type of expressions that people see Jesus in my life. And church, I want to close this morning. Last thing I'm going to say the most amazing example of an unusual expression that I've ever heard of in my entire life is when Jesus Christ stretched out his arms on Calvary's cross. Church, you want to talk about an expression, something that you would feel his love, you could read about his love, you could hear his love, that when that unusual expression happened, that he shed every drop of blood that you and I could have eternal life this morning. Church, you want to talk about an amazing, unusual expression. Jesus Christ gave it all. Westfield Baptist Church, it's time that we started giving our all. Church, let's pray this morning. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, as we humbly bow before the throne of grace, God, I pray this morning, God, that people look upon the lives, the people, the members of Westfield Baptist Church, and God, when they see the expressions on their face, Lord, they see you, they see Jesus Christ in each and everything that they do. God, I pray this morning that hearts and lives have been touched. Lord, I pray, Lord, that someone here today, Lord, if they don't know Jesus Christ, God, I can't save them, Lord, but I can take them to the one who can. Lord, I pray that they would come today and make the decision to follow your perfect son, Jesus. And, Lord, I pray for this church. God, I pray for this congregation right now, Lord, as I mentioned earlier, Lord, when we flood this altar, God, when we pray together, Lord, you do mighty and great blessings here at Westfield Baptist Church. God, again, we just want to praise you and thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.